Well, it's almost Father's Day, and I thought I'd recount a story some of you may have heard, but it's such an encouraging story. Good stories deserve to be repeated. I'd like to begin with uh, the conclusion of the famous Psalm 22, which recounts not only the crucifixion of Christ, but then of his ultimate exaltation and reign in glory. And it finishes this way, verse 30, a posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born, that he has done this. So the idea is that uh, people who have lived for Christ in the past, their works continue on, their works follow them. Uh, through their testimony, through the investment of younger people who are now living and who are carrying on that ministry through writings and now we have videos and audio, various ways that the truth of God is transferred from one generation to the next. And in fact, he says here that those who are already in heaven enjoying fellowship with the Lord, their ministry is going to reach a generation that hasn't even been born yet. This little story has to do with Steve Saint. His father, Nate Saint, was the missionary aviation pilot that took four other young missionaries onto the shores of the Karari River to reach out to a Stone Age people. Um, Jim Elliott is probably the most famous of the four, but Pete Fleming, Ed McCulley, Roger Udarian. And the five of them gave their lives for Christ, their spear to death by these people. But through their testimony, eventually some of the other family members, Elizabeth Elliott uh, and others, went into that closed community with the gospel and Actually, Ed McCulley's father had the privilege of baptizing the man that murdered his son. And uh, the gospel spread through that region as a result of these men being willing to give their lives for Christ. Well, now, Steve Saint was just five years old when his father died. He hardly can recollect his father. And when he was a young man, he was traveling in Africa and had, had been in Mali, and he was on a UNICEF plane that flew over to Timbuktu. And if ever there's a name that sort of speaks about the extreme ends of the earth, surely it's Timbuktu. He had been struggling with his faith. He was surrounded by a lot of aid workers that did not trust in the Lord, and he really was wrestling, was his father's murder necessary? He seemed to have been robbed by this, and he was struggling in his faith with the Lord. Well, it was told him at that time that there were two uh, UNICEF doctors in Timbuktu who were going to have to take the seats in the plane he had traveled in, and he would not be able to go on the return flight. And uh, so he, they told him, go into the city and see if he could find some help, maybe get a truck. Uh, but when he talked to one of the few French-speaking gendarmes there, he said, no, that's not a good idea. This is just sand. You'll die in the desert if you, if you leave here driving your own truck. Well, he remembered that a missionary had told him that if he ever got to Timbuktu, there was a small Christian mission there. And so there were a bunch of children gathered around him looking for backsheesh for handouts. And uh, he said to the children, did they know where the evangelical church might be? Well, the children didn't really know, but they took him around up this road and down that lane and eventually came to a little house that had a cross and uh, some pierced hands, wounded hands. And in French, the scripture, by his stripes, you were healed. And just then, a young man came down the lane from the house 
And uh, his name was, and I may not be pronouncing this correctly, but his name was Nua Ag Infa Yatara. And he was just uh, radiant. And immediately, a Steve Saint could tell this man knew the Lord. But they couldn't speak uh, languages that they understood. And so Steve Saint took him to an American missionary on the outskirts of town. And he was able to interpret between the two of them. So as they were talking, this dear man, Nua, told his testimony to Steve. He said that as a boy, the uh, mission station, there was an older missionary there by the name of Marshall, and the mission station had a nice little garden, and he determined that he was going to sneak in and steal some carrots from the garden. Uh, well, he got caught, and rather than punishing him, the missionary gave him the carrots and also gave him some little cards with Bible verses on them and told him if he memorized these Bible verses, that he would give him a pen. Well, this was a huge motivation. He said only the headmaster and the government officials had big pens, and he wanted to get a pen. And so he began to memorize these scriptures. Well, when he got his pen, the, uh, the school teacher recognized he must have been in touch with the missionary, and he was severely beaten for it. And when the parents found out, they threw him out of the house and told uh, the neighbors, do not take our boy in, leave him alone. In fact, eventually the mother determined that she was going to poison her son because of the shame that had been brought on her by his becoming a follower of Jesus. She invited him for a dinner. She poisoned his food. The poison had no effect on him. But his brother, who stole a portion of his meal, the brother became paralyzed, and I think to that day was damaged by the poison. So they knew the poison was, was operative, and uh, this became a very shocking thing to the community, that obviously this little Christian boy had been supernaturally protected from the poison. Well, anyway, he told a story how God had, had protected him and preserved him and used him. And uh, Steve Saint said to him, like, how were you able to sustain your faith in the face of all this opposition rejected by your family and thrown out of school and, and beaten and persecuted? How was your faith sustained? Well, he said, the missionary had given him some books, some missionary biographies to read. And one of the books that he was given to read was the story of these five missionaries who had given their lives in Ecuador seeking to reach these Stone Age people. And he said, I thought if these men were willing to give their lives for these people in Ecuador, that I should be prepared to give my life for Jesus as well. And at that moment, Steve realized, out of this man's mouth, there was coming the testimony that his father's death was not in vain, <laughs> that in Timbuktu, of all places, the message of their lives and the testimony they bore had reached this young man in the midst of his persecution and had fortified him in his faith in the Lord. And so here they were, these two relatively young men sitting across from each other, unable to speak their own native tongues. And yet, the one had given confidence to the other. And in fact, the young man said to Steve Saint, if you're the man's son, it must be a true story then. I didn't know if it was a true story. Yes, said Steve, that was my father. And so uh, this young man, Noah, received assurance that this was real. And Steve received assurance that this was real. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has done this. The message that had been declared through the death of Steve's father 
had traveled the world and had come to the heart of that young man. And now, even though Nate Saint was long ago in heaven, the message now was coming back, boomeranging back into the heart of Steve. I tell you what an amazing thing it is. I said this before, but it's so important. Someone has said, if you're living for a year, plant corn. If you're living for 10 years, plant trees. If you're living for a hundred years, plant men. But if you're living for eternity, plant the word of God. May the fathers in the West rise up and be testimonials to their own children. Invest the word of God in their own children so that when the fathers have gone on to glory, their children and their children's children will pass on the truth to generations that still are waiting to be born.